folks, how you doing? It's Emily, welcome back. So, the Class 800 is going to be releasing today, and I thought, well, I'm, I'm, today's yesterday, don't ask, don't question it. And since I spend a lot of my time on Class 800 series trains, just like to let you know, my day job, uh, I'm train crew on a Class 800 series train, not Class 800 itself, but one of the subtypes. I'm not going to talk about who I work for, all that kind of stuff, you know, same way I wouldn't expect any of you guys to volunteer who you work for. Uh, I might make it, you know, if you pay enough attention, I'll probably make it quite clear inside the video. But I just thought it'd be quite cool to have a listen to this and I could have my thoughts based on my experience. So, um, that, sorry, I just tried to rejiggle my audio a little there. I closed my eyes when that first came on, and that was pretty perfect. They've obviously put the window surround the the headlight surrounds in, which were missing. And can you guys see my? No, you can't. That's a problem. If you look at the headlights, there's a little sort of riveted panel around them. That was missing on the original DTG model. I'm glad. I'm glad that that's back. I'm no um, expert on the liveries, so I can't obviously say too much on those. But I mean, again, they look pretty spot on from you know pictures I've seen and the model models I own. Love the transfer and livery. Um, yeah, no, but the prototype livery for Transpennine. They actually ran those in passenger service in that livery, which is quite cool. Then you've got the hull livery, which I love the hull. Again, the hull, hull, hull livery is really nice. It's really complicated, and I, I honestly don't understand how you can make that it, into a game, but yeah, I really like it. And then you've obviously got the Lumo. I've noticed um, from reading the manual that they aren't going to include the unbranded Lumo livery, which is a shame, um, because obviously when these were first on test, they ran just plain blue uh, East Coast East Coast Trains Limited livery. Um, so it is what it is, though. Um, that's Coach G. I think that's the TM's office, whenever they are. Um, so train manager. That sounds pretty spot on. I've never noticed that sound before, so that might be specific to other units. And then that's that's pretty perfect. That VCB sound, that do do, you can hear that inside, and that's pretty spot on. Um, again, I've never heard the compressor, but that's just because most of my time is spent inside the train. So, uh, but you know, I believe that's pretty accurate. Yeah, I can take that. I've never actually seen the nose cone be opened, so, um, but that looks really nice. I like that it's not a smooth motion and it's not done at 100 miles an hour, which is pretty realistic from my understanding of how those work. Um, See, so yeah, that, that wobble is really nice, so I like that. It's not, you know, it's not perfectly machined. Never heard that sound before, but that's the hustle alarm, yep. Actually, I don't think that's the, that's current to all versions of the 800. Because that doesn't sound right to me. Because it's the, the high tone's right, but I don't think that's right to ours. I might be wrong. That's correct. Back of doors. The light. Extinguish as soon as the doors go, that's spot on. And where we go. Pretty much there. Yep, door seals. That's really nice. So one of the things that absolutely terrified me the first time I was on the train, leaning against the door, uh, doing dispatch things, and her, he, as you go, I think it's 17 miles an hour you go through when it happens. And the door moves outward about half a centimetre. But if you're not expecting it, you're leaning against it, it's enough to make you think you're falling out of the train. <laughs> That's pretty good. That is pretty spot on. So 
obviously I wouldn't normally be doing this trailer reaction, but with AP um, releasing this uh, the day before they released the, the, the pack, building that hype as they say, I can get away with it. I like the sparking. Again, I'm usually inside so I don't get to see that. Diesel mode. That's pretty perfect. Um, yep, that's good. That's pretty spot on. It's a shame, obviously, that that's just a, a 2D image. Uh, that's obviously, you know, an indented panel, the fuel filler cap, um, and obviously some engine controls there. But I can live with that. Nice. Yeah, that is, that's really good. Entirely convinced, but I've mainly heard 802s doing this, this sort of stuff. So we'll see. Nice. I like that though. Obviously, not all, depending on the vehicle, depending on what the train you're driving. I believe 800s have got G, uh, what they call them GUs, generator units, under most of the coaches. 801s have got a single. 802s have got them under most of the coaches. 803s don't have any at all and the driving cars are trailers so they don't have any engines in them so when we hear the rear pc go past we shouldn't hear any engine sound from that nice yeah and there you go so the rear, rear pc the rear car which is absolutely perfect rear car i'm using hitachi terminology um that's now probably covered more my first look So the doors disengage. They d yeah, they disengage when you come to a. S I'm not sure. It's not when you come to a stand. It's when you start slowing down. Yep. Does Betty talk to you? Yep. I call it Betty. Hi, Betty. That goes door release. So you can see, going over some of the switchology here. Your two red buttons, that's obviously your door release controls, door close. That button there, that says basically the guard's in control. Um, so in this, that situation, the driver can't actually close the doors. Or, or in theory, if that light was illuminated and the train was, at, was uh, at a stand, the driver couldn't release the doors either. So that's basically saying the guard's got control of the doors. Um, yeah. And then that's the hustle alarm. That's guard closing the doors. There you go. And there's your buzz buzz away. I'll send this to some of my driver friends, get their opinions. Yep, that's perfect. That sound. Actually, the door seal inflating. So, quick explanation. Um, when the train moves away, be through a certain speed. Uh, in my head, I've got 17 miles an hour. It must be slow about seven. Um, I'm, I, again, I'm not a driver. I don't understand the traction. I don't need to know these numbers. Um, but basically, that's not perfect, that sound. But I'm nitpicking. And also, this re was recorded on a Class 800. I don't work on a Class 800. So... You know, it might be different across the units. Inherently, they're the same trains, you know, except for a few minor differences. But who knows? I'm coming to a stand at Nebworth for some reason. Hmm. I've never heard the seal deflate actually. Flashbacks from Stephen. <laughs> that 
Sounds pretty spot on. So, again, I'm going to pause. I'm just going to take a lot longer than 30 minutes to go through. But my perspective on this so far is, you know, if you if you sat and did the exact same maneuvers on, as a train, you know, on your laptop, would you get the exactly the same sounds? Of course not. That's basically not possible because limitations. Um, but it's close enough that if I closed my eyes, I can, I'm having flashbacks, put it that way. Stevenage is a bit rubbish, the scenery. I've, I've been there a lot recently, so it's a lot, it's a lot different to that. And there we go, we're away. Hello everyone, and a warm welcome aboard this, your LMER service to London King's Cross. <laughs> I've just given away who I work for with that, oh well. <laughs> and no, it's not LMER. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely work for whole trains, that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, you know what? That sound is pretty spot on and perfect. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, Knebworth. You can tell it's not my ped, my ped driving. We managed to stop there. That's pretty good. I'm not going to cover diesel mode because I'm not too proficient on that. So I've never actually had diesel mode from inside, so I'm just going to skip forward. Okay, that's a lot. It's a lot louder on diesel than I remember it. I've I, I actually I've had a flashback, as I always do. That's not quite what I remember diesel sounding like. Put it that way. But yeah, you can see here, once you get up to speed, the, the um, electric motors kick in a lot. Let's do... Interesting. So of course... Not sure, so I know LNER, I've seen some photos of LNER cabs that have stickers saying KSJ horn fitted. Um, and some of the, obviously the units are being modified to have these horns a night of life. Um, obviously deemed to be better, I guess. Run sounds, always love the run sounds. The run sounds do help a lot in my opinion. I'm trying to lift that up a little. Just make sure you guys can still hear me, which you can. Um, and then... So yeah, actually that sounds pretty spot on. Again, like I'm used to hearing them coasting past me. It's about that speed there, so. So selected speeds on there, speedos on the left. Yes, yeah, so obviously as well, this is a great Western cab. Um, for example, the Class 800s don't have the speedo on the left, um, but apart from that, it's pretty much the same because the speedo on the left has all the symbology for advanced train protection. Advanced train protection is only implemented on the Great Western Main Line between London and Bristol. Um, it's not anywhere else in the country. So there's no point, you know, a Trans Pennine having it, for Trans Pennine 802 having uh, ATP on board. Um, but apart from that, I'm pretty happy with that. The TMS screen on, on the right hand side there, um, it, from memory, that's not as indented. And there's a little bit of more stuff going on over there. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna train cab tomorrow before I drive this. I'm gonna be listening to the sounds a lot more, and I'll be doing a review after work tomorrow when I get home. It'll probably be up about eight or nine o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, well, tonight by the time you guys watch this. So um, yeah, I'll let you know, guys. Let me know my thoughts. It might even be the weekend actually. Knebworth, Wallen Viaduct, coming into Wallen Garden City, Wallen Car Carriage Siding on the right hand side. No idea where this is. <laughs> um, I'd love to hear it under braking, because I've never noticed slip under power. I'd love to hear it under braking. Maybe I've heard it a little bit. And that's, again, that sounds pretty spot on. That's the first class areas in there. 
actually the orientation that's not the correct layout for a transpenner 802 from memory um on the left hand side here this one's i've been on um the there's wheelchair space so that that seat you can see at the back there between the two that seat's not there in reality Cool, L loving the speed set feature. That is used, um, especially if you're cruising for a couple of hours at high speed, you know, there's there's no point not using it really, is there? So really, that's a really nice speed control, speed set system. I'm gonna ask the drivers about how they, they, you know, employ that. Like I said, unfortunately, we've got a great Western cab, but, um, I, you know, I do appreciate that modeling the, the, the correct cab would be a lot more work, that a lot more effort than it's probably worth. Uh, in terms of the price, so I, I appreciate that. It's a shame, but I, I understand where they're coming from. Again, that that pull-in sounds perfect. You can hear the electric motor, the braking there, bit of flip squeal. Pretty spot on. You can see now doing a changeover to diesel. Um, an interesting functionality this train has is it has the ability to go past uh, what's called an APCO, an automatic power changeover point, and it can basically be set up to automatically change power at that point. But that's in reality, I'm not sure about in the world of AP. Again, I'm not going to focus on the diesel side because I've not got much experience of that. Let's do train wash mode. Okay, train wash is engaged. Power comes up, sits at four miles an hour. I mean, that is probably a handy trick to use to you know make getting out the depot easier. Hello, Hull. How are you? Can you, can you say a paragon of, of reliability? Yeah, destinations, that works. I do, so, I do wish we had a, a TMS implementation on board. The TMS is really interesting, and, you know, that's that's the problem with more modern uh, vehicles, is train management systems do everything. You know, the way this is set up, this will be coded the same way destination bind would be coded. And to me, seeing it flicking through like that is a little bit of motion not destroying, but reducing, shall we say. I like the, the illuminator pans, I like that. Uh, I was actually standing on a on the bridge in King's Cross today, looking down at an LNER 800, I think, uh, and it had the back, one of the pans up, one down, but both lights were on. So, and that's, that was in uh, like 10 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah. Flashy lights, power. So that's um, Hitchin. Uh, three scenarios on chat moss to be honest there's some political stuff you know in relation to people not liking chat moss at the end of the day what would you what, you know from my perspective what would i rather have um for 800 in train sim you've got well they go pretty much everywhere but the main routes you can use them on uh from south to north western main lines and all the extensions yeah but there's i mean it's not especially cornish main that would be nice but the the drawback of the the model that um that just trains went for with that one is you've got people who bought cornish mainline standalone and you've got people who bought the extension well it's a pain in the ass to, to make it you know make it work on both so i appreciate that you've then got southwest main lines by uh dtg that's unbranded. Arguably, does that make a difference when you've got AP packs going, whizzing around everywhere? Not really. But, you know, it's one of those things, isn't it? Um, 
then you've got I'm not going to mention London to Oxford uh, because that's that old now East Coast Mainline South where you've not got class 700 and um, you know York York Peterborough Ugh, pardon me I mean you could but again the route's not that great um, obviously you've got DPS East Coast that's freeware and but making payware for freeware always feels a bit crappy uh, Leeds lines that's subware and that's a bit of a weird model to get get your head around still Newcastle Edinburgh that's still a pretty weird one oh it's pretty old now and pretty inaccurate um, even from my knowledge of the route <coughs> and you've got um, see Dundee um, well Edinburgh Dundee that's pretty old and uh, five circle that's not worth it so you know in my opinion yeah chat moss is pretty much the best option um, in terms of employing it so yeah I'm not really bothered about the politics hello 150 hello 802 um, also point of note here you'll notice that um, the that unit there is running on its fr front pantograph I've no, from my understanding, all the first group unit of uh, Tox, at least on the East Coast, so Hull, TPE, and uh, Lumo run on front pan. Uh, LNER runs on back pan, and I'm not sure with GWR. Um, but yeah, basically it's there. And I know Hitachi, when they've got them on test, or well, technically GB Rail Freight, run on the back one. And he's away. Nice little overtake manoeuvre there. At 90. Meow. Sounds wise, that's pretty spot on. Um, and then, this is this is great. I've seen this bit before. All the East Coast talks together. we go so what are my thoughts you know what I'm excited um, I think this is going to be a heck of a, a sound pack for Mapy, and it's clear they've brought their normal level of attention to detail I've had a couple of little points back to them but that's stuff that I wouldn't know if I didn't work on them every day so you know and probably isn't really written down anywhere publicly available so I, you know, I, I appreciate, um, you know, the the level of effort that's gone into this. The I'm also going to say I'm not giving away the state secrets, but it's just stuff that you'd know from, you know, from watching train crew basically, and how they do processes. But um, like I say, um, in my opinion, pretty great pack. Uh, the attention to detail is definitely there. Am, am I going to buy it? Of course. Um, I think this is going to be rapidly become a pack that you're going to struggle to do without um, because they're everywhere, you know. Um, obviously, 800s, 803s, East Coast, Great Western, um, Trans Pennine route, you know, the, the, they cover the, the full length of that everywhere now. Um, the, you know, now we, we obviously we've got. Um, Midland, uh, sorry, EMR getting them, uh, Avanti getting them, they're going everywhere, um, and that's good. Um, so, and I think as such, you know, th this pack, you, you're not going to be able to do without it. Um, you know, it, it would now that we're getting these newer packs and these newer trains in, you know, three eight sevens, seven hundred, sorry, not seven hundreds, eight hundreds, uh, stuff like that. You know, it, we do need to focus on the other areas now that we're lacking. So things like the Class 700s, they're, they're a big miss at the moment for me on the south end of the East Coast. And I believe Imbue were working on a 700, that's great. Uh, and obviously ATS are, and are working with um, Guter Bahnhof on the flirts, which is really great. And that and that all, that's gonna bring the hobby to the next level in my opinion. You know, we can now, well, now we can model, you know, a respectful modern day scenario with a decent level of immersion. 
even stuff like having the hunger for in-game, that would really help. Um, yeah, like I say, I'm really excited for this. Um, I think it's going to be one of those you can't do without. Um, I'm going to build some, I'm probably going to, first, the first look will actually be, um, we'll, we'll go over this triangle, of this this uh, crossing here, sorry. I call it a triangle because you've got to the crossover line and the line of Lincoln there. For those of you not in the know, this is Newark Northgate. Um, one of the few, one of two flat crossings on the uh, UK rail network. Uh, there's one here and one over in Wales. This line here, that way goes to Lincoln, that way it goes to Nottingham, that way's to Edinburgh, that way's to London. I just realised you couldn't tell. Um, the line that goes off to the right goes off towards Lincoln. The line to the left goes towards Nottingham. The line the whole tr the whole train's on goes towards Edinburgh. The line that Luma went down goes towards London. Um, right, folks. Like I say, hopefully you've enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button on this video. Let me know what you thought of the, of the enhancement pack. And I'll see you guys hopefully uh, either today or tomorrow with a first look on, on, on this pack. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye for now.